Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the U.S. Military Summary. In July 1976, the Soviets unveiled what seemed to be a cutting-edge superfighter, causing great concern. At that time, the U.S. lacked any operational fighter capable of consistently and effectively challenging the Foxbat. Believed to possess multiple air-to-air -air and long-range air-to-air surface missile capabilities, it could reach speeds of Mach 3. As the U.S. and Soviet Union vied for air dominance, the Soviets appeared to have the upper hand. To counter this, the U.S. developed the most advanced fighter jet in history. During the Korean War, early fighter jets like the American F-86 and Soviet MIG-15 engaged in intense air-to-air -air combat. Both were lightweight and agile, designed for close-range dogfighting. However, by the mid-1950s, emerging technologies began to revolutionize fighter aircraft design. Powerful new radars could detect enemies from far away, while new guided missiles could strike targets from kilometers away. This led military strategists to believe that future air battles would be fought beyond visual range, with enemies appearing as mere blips on radar screens. Consequently, the latest fighter jet, the F-4 Phantom, was no longer light or agile. Instead, it was fast, heavily armed with missiles, and equipped with the robust radar. Many thought of dogfighting had become outdated, but this was far from accurate. During the Vietnam War, the Air Force's new tactics were put to the test, but the results were disappointing. The skies over Vietnam were filled with both enemy and friendly aircraft, and the systems meant to help pilots identify opponents proved to be unreliable. This forced pilots to approach targets closely for visual confirmation. The concept of engaging from a distance crumbled as the new F-4 Phantoms were drawn into close-quarter dogfights with more nimble MIGs, a scenario their pilots were not prepared for. The Phantoms' guided missiles turned out to be highly unreliable, with only 14% of them hitting their targets initially. These missiles were designed for larger, high-altitude targets and left pilots defenseless when they failed, as the F-4 lacked a gun for close combat. The larger, less maneuverable Phantoms with their characteristically smoky engines were easily detected. More agile MIGs exploited the F-4's vulnerability by drawing them into close-range combat. The F-4 struggled to perform as an interceptor used as a fighter, and American pilots faced alarming casualty rates. Military planners realized that dogfighting was far from obsolete. The Air Force hastily equipped the F-4 with pod-mounted Gatling guns and trained pilots to engage in the more nimble MIGs. However, these were only temporary solutions. What the Air Force truly needed was a dedicated air superiority fighter, which required discarding previous concepts for next-generation aircraft that were deemed too large, heavy, and likely to underperform compared to the Phantom. The urgency to develop a new fighter increased when the Soviet Union revealed their own advanced fighter in 1976. It appeared to be built for exceptional maneuverability, featuring twin tails, a vast wingspan, and powerful engines. Intelligence analysts believe the Soviets were using advanced lightweight materials and innovative radar and weapon systems. Shortly after, the Soviets set new world speed and altitude records with their new fighter. The U.S. had no operational fighter that could consistently and effectively counter the Foxbat. The situation in Vietnam was concerning enough. But now the Soviet Union seemed poised to deploy a new super fighter. After focusing on building interceptors, fighter bombers, and attack aircraft for almost two decades, the Air Force finally aimed to create a cutting-edge air superiority fighter. In 1968, top U.S. aircraft designers were asked to submit proposals, which would be evaluated using the innovative concept of energy maneuverability. This mathematical formula assessed a fighter's overall performance, considering factors such as speed, thrust, drag, and weight. In December 1969, McDonnell Douglas was awarded the contract to build the new fighter, with their design resulting from 2.5 million man-hours of effort, enabling immediate development. The F-15 Eagle was designed for tactical dominance in any airspace. Its two afterburning turbofans produced a combined thrust of 48,000 pounds, enough to break the sound barrier while ascending vertically. With a top speed of over Mach 2.5, it became the fastest fighter jet ever produced by the United States. The engines featured variable air intakes and a computerized air inlet control system for optimal airflow at any speed or angle of attack. Unlike the F-4, which had reduced wing area for high supersonic speeds, the F-15 utilized low wing loading combined with a high thrust-to-weight ratio for superior maneuverability. 
The cockpit was situated high in the fuselage with the canopy providing a 360 degree view and a digital heads up display integrated with radar and avionics. The aircraft carried eight Sparrow and Sidewinder missiles and a 20mm Gatling gun that could fire up to 6,000 rounds per minute. For increased survivability, it featured triple redundant hydraulics, low vulnerability flight controls, and a reinforced airframe. The F-15's blend of speed, power, and agility made it one of the greatest fighters ever built. The first prototype was revealed in June 1972, just three years after McDonnell Douglas got the green light. The new fighter underwent extensive testing, facing off against the best aircraft the Air Force had in its arsenal. When pitted against the heavy F-4 Phantom, the F-15 demonstrated superior control and easily outperformed the interceptor. The smaller, lighter F-5, which was used to stimulate more agile MRG fighters in combat, had difficulty evading the larger F-15. In nearly every encounter, whether beyond visual range or close dogfighting, the F-15 held a significant advantage. With a genuine air superiority fighter in their possession, the Air Force was prepared to challenge the Soviet Union. Only a year and a half earlier, the Soviets had set new time to climb world records with the MIG-25. In 1975, engineers modified a pre-production F-15 by removing non-essential components and even its paint to make it as light as possible. In North Dakota's cold, dense air, the Eagle performed a series of climbs from a standstill reaching altitudes as high as 30 kilometers. The F-15 not only beat the MIG's records, but shattered them by over 25%. The F-15 Eagle became one of the most successful fighter development programs in history. By 1974, over 400 early F-15A and B models were ordered for the U.S. Air Force, and mass production had begun. America's allies such as Israel, Japan, and Saudi Arabia also sought the new jet. Some of the first F-15s were deployed at West German air bases near the Soviet Union, setting the stage for a potential face-off against the MIG-25. In 1976, the Americans finally got a close look at the Soviet Union's superfighter, but it wasn't what they had anticipated. In September, Lt. Viktor Belenko, a 29-year-old pilot with the Soviet Air Defense Forces, decided to defect from the Soviet Union. He secretly flew his MIG-25 from a Soviet airbase in the Far East to a civilian airport in Japan. After over a decade of mystery, the Americans had the opportunity to examine the Fox bait in detail. Despite their similar size and appearance, the MIG-25 and F-15 had almost nothing else in common. Constructed primarily from heavy nickel steel alloy, the Fox band weighed almost double the F-15. Its large wings were not for agility, but were necessary to lift the massive jet. The immense weight limited the MIG-25 to a mere 4.5G maneuver, while the F-15 was capable of nearly the same. The bulk of the MIG's load was fuel for its enormous engines, and even then its combat radius was a meager 300 kilometers. Its avionics used outdated vacuum tubes, and its radar lacked look-down capability, rendering it unable to detect an F-15 flying below its horizon. Contrary to American fears, the MIG-25 was not a dogfighting monster, but a high-altitude interceptor designed to catch enemy bombers at incredible speeds. The Soviets had kept the Fox Bat's capabilities a secret, exploiting its propaganda value and the alarm it caused the Americans. However, in 1976, the tables turned as the Soviet Union had no fighter capable of surviving a dogfight with an F-15. F-15s achieved their first victories in 1979 when Israeli pilots downed four Syrian MIG-21s in a single encounter. Over the years, the Eagle consistently won air battles, accumulating over 100 victories without a single loss, a record unmatched by any other fighter in history. Early F-15A and B models were soon supplemented by C and D variants, enhancing the aircraft's range, payload, and weapon systems. Initially envisioned as an air superiority fighter, the F-15 was also developed into a formidable ground attack aircraft, leveraging its superior range, speed, and payload. Almost 50 years after its first flight, the F-15 remains essential to the U.S. Air Force, with the F-15EX, a thoroughly modernized replacement for the F-15C, being delivered beginning in 2021. The MIG-25 was not designed to combat an air superiority fighter like the F-15, but in January 1991, these two Cold War symbols finally confronted each other in the skies over Baghdad. The results was not what anyone anticipated. 
The MIG-25, despite its lack of maneuverability, compensated with its unparalleled speed as the fastest fighter ever. The Iraqis capitalized on this strength, crafting a daring strategy to ambush F-15 Eagles while they patrolled the skies. And that's all the content of today's video. Thank you for watching the entire video. Don't forget to share the video with friends and family to discuss and explore other fascinating military topics. If you have any opinions, suggestions, or proposals for us on any military topics, please leave a comment below. We always appreciate your contributions to help our channel grow and deliver more exciting content. Lastly, thank you for supporting US Military Summary throughout this time. We look forward to seeing you in future videos. Have a great day and goodbye for now.